Hello and welcome to TD Design and Build. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this sustain and port toolbox storage system with sliding drawers, side storage drawers, and in the next video along, I'll show you how to make this floating beach worktop. So, without further ado, let's get to it. The first thing I did was design the whole system virtually using CAD. If you want to see how I designed this, then wait till the end of the video. I printed off the CAD drawings as a guide and started to mark out all the cuts. I use an 18mm cutter, this makes sure that the slots are the same width as the ply. The router is a Bosch GOF1600, which has a base attachment that allows you to work on the Festool track. I will be doing a video review of this router pretty soon. I router out the slots 4mm deep. A good rule of thumb is less than a third the thickness of the board. This maintains the strength. I cut 2mm passes at a time. You can go deeper, but I find it leaves a cleaner cut to do a couple of passes. I used 18mm Baltic birch. You can probably use thinner stock, but I had a couple of sheets left over from another job. Before cutting the boards to size, I router out all the slots in one go. That way when I cut the boards down, all the slots will line up perfectly and it's a quicker way of working. Once I've cut all the slots and checked them, I get out the Festool TS55 track saw and cut the rips. At this point in time I didn't have the workshop set up properly so I wasn't using the Festool dust extraction hose so there was dust going everywhere which is why I've got the mask on. Once the cabinet sides were cut, I then went on to cut the inserts or the shelf inserts. You might notice some burn marks as I'm cutting. That's because the Festool blade had become glazed from the glue that's inside the plywood. I had to take the blade off and clean it with some special blade cleaner and it stopped leaving burn marks. Once that is all done, I glue and press the whole thing together and then biscuit joint and screw the back on. As you can see, I'm not in a proper workshop setup, so I don't have a big workbench. It's quite a small workshop, quite confined, so I'm having to do everything a little bit cowboy, <laughs> um, but this is just the nature of the game. Please forgive the poor camera angle here. I know you can't really see much, but that's me biscuit jointing and screwing the top and bottom of the cabinets on. This is the drawing for the middle sustainer port section. This sits above the worktop. The mid sys port has notched out profiles for the draw trays. To make these, I used a template and then cut them with the router and flush trimmer. I go into more detail on how to do this in the next video where I make the draw trays. 
When everything is cut, I glued the partitions in, clamped it and left it overnight to dry. Once all the units are assembled, I had to fix them to the walls. These units are pretty heavy, so I used my Irwin speed clamps set on spread to lift them into place. I made sure they were nice and level and then put the fixings in and secured them. Once the units are up and level, I start making the drawers and slide trays. They all have a profile cut out so you can grab the drawer and pull it open. So the first thing I have to do is make a template for this. I used a flush trim router bit to transfer the template onto all 12 drawer faces. Once they are done, I start cutting the drawer panels. 18 millimeters is probably a bit big for drawer panels. You could go down to eight or maybe 10, but I quite like the heavy duty look and feel. Once all the internal panels are cut, I set them out, mark them, and use my Makita biscuit jointer to fix them. I glue and clamp the whole lot and leave it for several hours. Making the sustainer slide trays was a little bit harder and I stupidly didn't record that part, but I will talk through how I did this. So this is the design of the sled, which I did on CAD. You can see the side area where the runners go This is the drawer fully assembled. You can see the drawer runners screwed onto the sides, the four holes in the top for the toolbox to sit in, and the pull profile at the front. Now these have got ball bearing runners that they slide into. I've already screwed those into place. And the drawers will take 30 kilograms in weight, and I have tested that. So one of the great things with using CAD software, as you can see with this, is you can literally download the box design of the Festool sustainer and then just have a look at it, work around it. As you can see, it's got these four little notches at the bottom and it gives you the exact sizes and exact dimensions of these. And it also shows you the exact size of the box so when it comes to making the sled base i was able to get all of my dimensions exactly to match the box that's the assembled drawer slide you see how you can map everything out and make sure that the trays all fit the interesting thing about sustainers if i just go over to this drawing here is you can see this is the sustainer five which is their biggest one uh, that's the four with a one. Uh, this is two threes. This is a two, a two and a one. And this is five size ones. And if I lay them up next to each other, you can see that they're all the same size. So the whole idea is that as long as the sysport can contain 
a cis five, then you'll be able to get two threes in, uh, one four and a one, a one and two twos, and five ones. If you have the next generation sustainer, they are slightly larger, so you will want to make the apertures bigger. So if I just go over here to the cabinet drawing, what this shows you is to make the sys port, they need to be 406 millimeters wide. That's including clearances and 490 millimeters high. Now, you only need to make it 490 if you're putting in the sled base like I have, because what that does is give you the clearance to put this in as well as the boxes. But do remember, if you have the new sustainers which are larger, then you will need to make the apertures larger to match. That's why CAD is a very handy tool to have if you're doing design work, because you can basically make it in a virtual environment first, check everything off, make sure it's all gonna fit together, make sure it all works. That's the end of this video. Hope you found it useful. In the next video, I'll show you how to make the floating workbench. See you there.